Here we have an iPad 8. This is model number A2270. Let me just double check. A2270. And customer said the tablet does not charge. We may have a problem with the charge and flux cable. We may have a problem with the TriStar charging IC. Or we may even have a problem with different areas of the motherboard. The first thing I'm going to do is use our TriStar tester just to get a quick answer. Right there, as soon as I plug it in, I see a triangle which indicates that we have a problem with either the charge and flux cable or the TriStar chip. We get a fail. Okay, we get a fail. Check TriStar. And everything is fail. Fail, 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 fail. So the problem is likely the TriStar chip. Now, if you do not have this TriStar testing device, you can use something like this, a test board. The board will break out the pins of the charging connector, and we can test the pins in diode mode or resistance mode. And we can get an idea if we have a problem with the charging port or TriStar chip. Red probe on number eight, which is ground. And if we test here, we get a reading in diode mode of 0 0.748. I know from experience this should be around 0 0.752. So 48 is low, and it makes a difference. Between 48 and 52, it makes a difference. This one should be the same, 0 0.747, and it should be around 0 0.752. And this one is a no read. This one should read the same. And it's also reading 0 0.746. 0 0.746. This one here is reading 0 0.589 and it should be reading somewhere around 0 0.529. So we have a difference in numbers and when measuring in diode mode it makes a difference between 0 0.748 or 0 0.752. Now if we measure in resistance mode I honestly do not know what the readings should be on a good working tablet but I do have a tablet right next to me let me just test the customer's board and resistance mode first. We get 256 kilo ohms. The same should be here. 257 kilo ohms. I'm getting uh, 244. Okay, so 244. 257. 256. And 245. So those two are close to each other in ohms reading, 244, 245. And I'm talking about kilo ohms, 257 and 257. And this one is 140. Let's measure a good working tablet and see what ohms reading we get. And that's how you learn about the numbers because a lot of people ask me, why did you learn this? Who told you about the numbers? No one. I'm the one who told myself because I measured a good working tablet and I kept the numbers in mind. And anytime I get a similar tablet, I go by those numbers. Now, if we measure this one, we get 253 kilo ohms. What did we get on the customer's board? We are getting 253 on a good board. And if we go, if we test the customer's board, Two fifty six. So two fifty three and two fifty six is not a big deal. And this one is what? Uh one hundred and forty three kilo ohms. Let me test a good working board. one forty three on the bad board and on this board is two hundred and forty kilo ohms so as long as you know the numbers of a good working board you can immediately tell if you have a problem with the tristar chip you can of course go by the resistance reading i've always worked on the diode reading and i had great success using this board in diode reading an easier way would be a tristar tester but you do not need it a $5 board is more than enough to know if the TriStar chip is good or not. 
I use this very same board. I have three boards here, and those boards are sold on our site. I have one for a USB-C, and I use this on a Nintendo Switch. We have one for the micro USB, and we have one for the lightning port, three boards. So right now, we're going to go ahead and replace the TriStar chip. And let me check if the TriStar chip is in the same location as the previous version of the iPad, iPad 7. And yes, right there. It's right at the corner here. And right now, what we need to do is we need to break off. We need to break off that metal frame. Just like that. That's enough. Okay, and never cut that piece without putting your finger over it because it may snap and hit your eye. Anytime you are cutting something, a wire or a piece of aluminum or metal or whatever the case may be, put your finger over it so that piece does not hit your face. Your face is more important than this repair. Safety. I use my goggles whenever I feel like I have to. But in this case, I just put my finger over it. And I cut that piece. OK, so pin number one is on the bottom left. Let's go ahead and desolder this chip. I just want to put a cover because we have a plastic connector here. We do not want heat to spill over. So I have this iPad cover I can put on top so everything is safe. We do not want to fix one thing and damage something else. And the TriStar chip is out. And pin number one is on the bottom left, as I have the board oriented. It's towards this side here. Now we're going to apply some flux, and we're going to clean those unloaded solder bolts. Get rid of the glare. And let's apply leaded solder and mix it with unloaded. So we can lower the melting temperature of unleaded solder. And then we're going to use the wick and our hot tweezers to clean those pads off. We're not going to use a wick, of course, because it's a tight area. And there's a risk that we may create a mess. So just be as precise as possible. Apply leaded solder. And precision is key when doing this type of repairs. One wrong shake and you can end up knocking off components from the sides. Apply a tiny bit of flux and now we're gonna grab a piece of the solder wick with our hot tweezers. Okay, and look at that. Look at the beauty of this technique. Look at the beauty of this technique. I was experimenting with this technique when I was working on a Samsung Note Pro, changing the Wi-Fi IC. And I said, why not try a solder wick along with hot tweezers and see if I'm able to desolder solder balls using that method. And it worked. And I've been using that method since.
All right. Now all we have to do is solder a new TriStar chip and we should be good. Let me zoom in a bit. Very nice. Very, very nice. We're gonna add some flux. All right, so now we're gonna hold that chip down, apply heat. I'm gonna hold it down so it does not move. And the chip made a connection. And now all we have to do is reflow and we should be all good. All right, and the chip is soldered on nicely. Let's wait until the board cools down a bit. And you see this connector was not affected because it was covered. We covered this whole area, FEC area and the connector with this shield. So we only focused heat on this area of the board. I'm gonna start off by testing using our TriStar tester and then we're gonna plug in that testing board and see if the value is changed. Right now, when we tested with the TriStar tester, I got a triangle and now we do not have that triangle no more. So if we test, pass, pass, right there. And if we check all the values, we have a pass on everything. Great. The job is done, but let's go ahead and use our testing board and see what happens. What values are we going to read for iPad 8? Right now, if we measure in diode mode, number 2, we are getting uh, 743. 743. 6 is 741. And finally, the one on the side here is 741. So number 7, which is this one here, and number 6 on an iPad 8 should be reading 0.741 and the rest should be reading, number two, number three should be reading 0 0.743, and number five in diode mode should read 0 0.584. And if we measure in resistance mode, you can take notes in case you have a similar tablet in the future for those who work in the same type of business. I'm not talking to people who do not repair, but to people who do repair. We have a lot of repair shops that watch the channel. So resistance mode, number two, we get 250 kilo ohms, 250 on number three. Number five is about 242 kilo ohms. Six is 237 kilo ohms, and seven should be the same, 237 to 38 kilo ohms, all right? So write the values down, and maybe every time I work on an iPad, I'll mention the values so you can have a list. So anytime you are working with an iPad, you want to know if you have a TriStar chip issue, you plug in the board and you just compare the values. If the values are different, you likely have a problem with the TriStar chip. Or if you are getting a short reading or no reading on number two, three, five, six, seven, then most likely it's a flex cable issue. So that's it, the job is done. I'm gonna give this to Big Boss to reassemble and test and maybe I'll finish off the video after the tablet is put back together. I'll be back. So Big Boss reassembled the tablet and it's on. Tablet is on. We're gonna end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do something else in the next video.